So welcome to the 14th annual Tri-City Crystal Apple Awards for Excellence in Education Ceremony. Before we begin our program, would you please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. My name is Rich Cummins, and I'm the president of Columbia Basin College, and I'm really uh, happy to be the host of the Crystal Apple Awards this year. I was the host last year um, and was surprised at the end of it, uh, pleasantly surprised. But um, you know that I'm really honored to be the host of this because my alma mater, Gonzaga, is tipping off right now, and um, <laughs> this, this is where I want to be, so um, <laughs> I'm serious about it. Uh, whenever I get the chance uh, to, to talk about education, and uh, I do it frequently, um, I'm, uh, you know, I have a core theme, and that is that education is transformational. Education and educators who are committed um, change the lives of, of people every day. And so I like to read this particular passage from uh, the author Tracy Kidder, who wrote a great little book called Among School Children, and I think it summarizes better than anything what, uh, uh, what teachers do every day. Teachers usually have no way of knowing that they have made a difference in a child's life, even when they have made a dramatic one. A good teacher can give a child at least a chance to feel, she thinks I'm worth something, maybe I am. Good teachers put snags in the river of children passing by, and over the years, they redirect hundreds of lives. There is an innocence that conspires to hold humanity together, and it is made of people who can never fully know the good that they have done. I think that kind of summarizes what teachers do, and sometimes the good that you've done uh, takes, uh, you know, it's, it's, a, it's, an it's a flowering over, over decades that happens. Um, so today we get to celebrate uh, the, the work of all of you who have redire redirected the lives of innumerable um, children. And I kind of wonder, sarcastically, um, how the HISPI proposes to measure that. Um, I'd like now to introduce the planning committee for this year's ceremony. Please stand as I call your name. Bruce Hawkins of VSD123. <laughs> Calvin Dudney, Dudney from Mission Support uh, Alliance, MSA. <laughs> Molly Curtis from ESD123. and Jerry Holloway from uh, Washington River Protection Solutions. Thank you. As vital as the planning committee is to the foundation, uh, to the foundation of this recognition ceremony, uh, the Crystal Apple Awards would not exist without the 40 or more uh, uh, sponsors you see in your program. I won't read out the names of everyone, but, but uh, please note them, and uh, if you get a chance, um, please thank them. We would like to mention the sponsors of the actual gifts uh, to today's recipients. A gift certificate, each recipient will receive a gift certificate from Outback Steakhouse in Kennewick, two tickets to a Tri-Cities Dust Devils baseball game, two tickets to a Tri-Cities Fever football game, two tickets to a Tri-City Americans hockey game, a gift bag from McDonald's, a gift box of apples for each winner from Brochy Orchards, a thousand dollar check for each teacher, Thanks to all the sponsors listed in the program. Thank you. Now I'd like to ask uh, if there are any sponsors out in the audience, if you would please stand so we can give you a warm round of applause as well. So it's now time to present the awards. Um, to present this year's awards for the Richland School District, please uh, welcome Superintendent Jim Busey. Well, thank you, uh, Rich. And again, uh, on behalf of um, the Richland School District, I'd like to thank Bruce, the ESD board, and all the staff Molly, of course, and everybody that's put this event together, we really appreciate it. I do want to make a comment about uh, Rich. Got to get to know Rich over the last uh, maybe year and a half or so, and I can tell you, CBC is a great partner for all of our districts in this entire region. In particular, we work uh, closely with Rich on Delta High School issues, and anytime we uh, seem to need things, which is about every few weeks, 
uh, Rich steps forward and, and, and offers all kinds of things to help us. And in particular, uh, when we need a little bit more space uh, in some interim issues here, uh, he said, you know, we can give you three or four classrooms, and I can tell you that partnership is wonderful for all the kids in the entire region. So thank you, Rich, for that. Um, I'd like to invite our two uh, uh, great teachers from the Richland School District up uh, on the podium, Sarah McMiniman and Marcia Brown. It's an honor uh, once again to be on the podium to recognize the teachers that go the extra mile, teachers who make a difference in the lives of students. It is a privilege to tell you a little bit about Marcia Brown, who is a second grade teacher at Jefferson Elementary School, and Sarah McMenamin, a French teacher at Hanford High School. Marcia and Sarah are leaders in their respective schools. Each has a passion for helping students succeed. They represent the very best in what education is all about. First of all, Marcia has taught second grade at Jefferson for the past 24 years. She has served on the building leadership team, the reading action team, and the critical incident response team. She has served on numerous curriculum committees, both at the building and the district level. She currently is working with fellow elementary teachers to implement a new standards-based report card. During Marsh's tenure at Jefferson, the school was named a National Blue Ribbon School in 1999 and received a Washington State School of Distinction Award in 2008. A key, key group at Jefferson is the school, school improvement team, and Marcia is one of those members. The team takes a leading role in guiding curriculum, assisting in professional development, and analyzing student assessment data to set yearly goals, and team members lead other Jefferson teachers with innovative ideas and trainings. Marcia and her grade level PLC team have taken the lead in analyzing common assessments. They use the assessment data to differentiate instruction for students at all abilities. As one of the colleagues stated, Marcia truly excels when it comes to differentiated instruction. She always makes sure that the individual needs of students are being met. What a great testimony that is, meeting the needs of each and every student. Wanting success for each and every student is what Marcia Brown, uh, Marcia Brown is all about. In 1998, Marcia was named the Walmart Teacher of the Year for the Mid-Columbia Region. In 2000, she received a Gates Leadership Project grant. She has been listed in the who's who's of American teachers on two different occasions. What's most important today, though, is to pass on to you all of those closest uh, to, to Marcia and what they say about her. They reflect on her character as a teacher and as a human being. Some of the staff say that Marcia is our, Marcia is our team leader and uh, shares her expertise openly and without hesitation. She shows expertise in all areas of our curriculum. She studies her lessons and continues her educational growth by attending many workshops on her own time to continue to better herself as an educator. A parent stated, my daughter had the great fortune to be in Mrs. Brown's class. Academically, she flourished. More importantly, Mrs. Brown encouraged her to work harder and move beyond what was expected and to realize her personal top goals. Mrs. Brown's teaching does not stop with mere academics, but she desires her students to be caring people. And finally, this comment from Marcia herself. One of the greatest honors I receive is being visited by former students who tell me that they are working towards a degree in education and that their time in my second grade classroom was part of what influenced their decision to go into teaching. I had the opportunity to go to the um, uh, Jefferson staff meeting uh, one day to present this award early in the morning and uh, uh, Bobby Butters invited me down there. When I was there, I noticed that uh, Marcia was one of the staff members there very early making copies, getting ready, and everybody else was just kind of sitting there for the meeting, and she was uh, working, getting prepared for that, uh, that first lesson. So with that, I want to thank Marsha for caring about each and every student that comes into her classroom, and uh, thank you for your work, Marsha. And now we have our superb French teacher from Hanford High School, Sarah McMenamin. Sarah joined the Hanford High School staff in 2005. She, have served, she has served as a leader on the school's professional learning community training team. She served on the STAR 2 committee for two years and will co-teach a STAR 2 course for district teachers this spring. That is, that is some of the instructional practices we're looking at improving in our district and, and she's a true leader there. One of Sarah's goals at Hanford High School ha has been to establish upper level French courses. She was instrumental in introducing the University of Washington French 103 course where students can take the course at our local high school schools and earn five University of Washington credits. 
Extending upon this for next year, Sarah and her colleagues are planning to offer a French four and five course. It, it also has an exam, which is a worldwide French test in which students can waive university classes or credits based upon their exam results. This is excellence in education, teachers reaching for more, teachers challenging their students to reach for more. Another one of Sarah's passions as an educator is to take her students to explore the outside four walls of her classroom. This summer, she will lead her third group of students to France while they will spend two weeks learning about French culture and staying with host families. She has also taken groups to Seattle and Portland the past two years to experience French uh, culture a little closer to home. As Sarah stated, for French teachers whose real life experiences are our, are our, our championship game, our opening night of the play, our science fair. I want to share some of the comments made by fellow staff and parents and students that Sarah has directly impacted. These comments are meaningful because they come from those who interact with her on a daily basis. Sarah empowers students to be the best they can be and go beyond what they think is possible, said one of our staff members. The excitement and enthusiasm Sarah exhibits every day in the classroom and around the school has no equal. She is a kind, caring, and thoughtful individual and values each person for who they are. One of the students says, as a first year French student, I was petrified. However, Mrs. McMiniman always supported our learning by giving us doable tasks. My favorite activities were skits that, were able, that we were able to act out and perform for the class. One time she even videotaped us so that we would enjoy and laugh at each other's efforts. And I'll end with a comment about Sarah as she talks about the importance of building relationships with her students. I love and appreciate the bond that is developed by teaching the same kids for their entire high school careers and my efforts are validated when I hear it from former students who continue with French and their post-high school lives. Thank you, Sarah, for influencing our students in such a positive and meaningful way. Thanks, Sarah. Thank you, Jim, and congratulations. Uh, it's now my pleasure to introduce uh, the superintendent of Pasco Schools, Sandra Hill. When I said we're next, I meant follow me. <laughs> Good afternoon. Today I have the extreme privilege of introducing two wonderful teachers who are, I also consider my friends. About 30 years ago, give or take, we all came to Pasco School District as new Pasco teachers. And this spring, both of them will retire, which leaves me wondering, where did I go wrong? Um, I am pleased to introduce Pasco's 2012 Crystal Apple recipients, Ev Abernathy in the pink and Paula Galen in the brown. Well, they, um, I would also like to take this time to recognize their families who are here. Would Ev's family stand up and Paula's family? We have grandchildren here, there we are. And would their Pasco School District family who are here to support them stand as well? Thank you. It's impressive, isn't it? I want to thank all of you for your support of Ev and Paula. We know that the love, care, and support of family and colleagues is what helps us all be the best we can be. And especially in a career that constantly demands that we give our all and be our best. And that is just what both Ev and Paula have done. They have made a difference to thousands of Pasco students and their families throughout their many years of dedication and outstanding teaching in a variety of positions in schools. I'll begin by telling you a little bit about Ev. Um, for the past 17 years, she has stayed in one place, though several positions, at Longfellow Elementary. She's been a reading specialist, a writing interventionist, a testing facilitator, a fifth grade teacher. Ev is currently a reading recovery and level, leveled literacy intervention teacher, working with struggling readers through all the grades. Longfellow principal Diana Sisney says, Ev is constantly challenging herself and others to a higher level of expertise and knowledge. Her creative ability to think outside of the box enables her to utilize time, resources, and personnel to their maximum potential. She is willing to explore any and all new avenues as a source of student improvement. The growth of each student is her focus. Ev also focuses on her colleagues and serves as a resource and mentor. Fellow teacher Jennifer Gilliam says of Ev, 
She possesses a deep knowledge of the subject matter, and she is able to mani manipulate, simplify, and individualize her teaching based on data. She em empathizes with students who might not like reading and writing, um, and turns that lack of enthusiasm around by presenting the curriculum in a new or exciting way. She has the uncanny ability to reach individual students and help them fill the gaps they may have in their literacy learning. This, also, this knowledge also makes Mrs. Abernathy a teacher leader within the school and the district. And even in her spare time, Ev is helping children as an active volunteer for Safe Harbor Crisis Nursery. The strongest endorsement of Ev's talent and ability as a teacher comes from her former student, Jennifer Lopez, who wrote, when I was in the first grade, I was the lowest in reading. Then I went to Mrs. Abernathy. Then when I went to Mrs. Abernathy, I felt like I could read anything because she encouraged me to never give up. When I was ready to give up, Mrs. Abernathy told me never to give up if I wanted to succeed in life. Now that I am in the fifth grade, my reading level is the highest it can be. This is why I think Mrs. Abernathy is the best reading teacher in the world. <laughs> Ev, we wish you the best in your retirement, but, know, but you know that we'll miss you, your innovation, your passion, your kindness, and your absolute commitment to your students. Don't do that. Please help and join me in congratulating 2012 Crystal Apple winner Ev Abernathy. When, when I went to um, announce this at her school at a staff meeting, I think we needed a whole box of Kleenex between us, so we're trying to get through this. I also have the privilege of honoring another outstanding PASCO teacher, Paula Galen. Paula serves as the Reading Recovery and Leveled Literacy Specialist at Frost Elementary. Assistant Director of Curriculum and Professional Development, Alma Duran, notes, Mrs. Galen is an outstanding teacher who brings a love of teaching and learning to her profession. She is highly reflective in her daily teaching of children, as well as in her coaching of colleagues. She continues to search for effective teaching strategies to reach the needs of all learners. Teacher Angela Miners noted, Paula Galen is one of the most dedicated, compassionate, and professional teachers I have had the opportunity to work with. I have worked with her closely and have done my best to delve into her extensive knowledge of how to teach young read learners to read. She is reading recovery trained and invites new and experienced teachers into her lessons so we may develop and implement these strategies with our struggling readers. Paula is also a leveled literacy intervention teacher and comes into my classroom to intervene with t readers who need op more opportunity for practice. My students who are not working with her beg her to let them join her groups. Paula is also a leader among her colleagues, not just at Frost, but across the district. Reading Recovery and LLI specialists Molly Harker and Jill McCullough wrote, as a colleague, Paula's leadership skills can be seen by her involvement in district roles. She has served on numerous district committees, leadership teams, and staff development trainings. She has collaborated with her colleagues and provided guidance and support to all teachers. Because she is truly a continual learner, she pursued and received her national board certification in the last few years and provided support to other teachers in that process. But again, to gain the true impact of a teacher, we look to her students. In purple marker with a fair amount of butterfly and flower stickers to make her point, first grade student Elizabeth wrote, Mrs. Galen is so pretty. She helps me do my homework. <laughs> what makes this letter all the more poignant was the letter that followed it by Paula's principal, Dominique Dennis, who writes, this letter was written by Elizabeth, first grader at Robert Frost, on behalf of Mrs. Galen. Elizabeth came to us barely speaking a word in any language. She did not know any of her letters or sounds. While she still has difficulty communicating, she has opened up to Paula. Paula has spent countless hours working with Elizabeth in re reading recovery, not only to support Elizabeth with her academics, but to support her social and emotional well-being. Paula is one of the few adults Elizabeth will, Elizabeth will speak to. Obviously, Elizabeth has come a long way in reading and writing, thanks to Paula. The old proverb says that if you give a man to fish, he eats for a day. But if you teach him to fish, he eats for a lifetime. When we look at the careers and, the careers and accomplishments of Evan Paula, they make the proverb ring true in our world. When you teach children to read, you give them a hope for a brighter future. I did it. <laughs> Thank you.
Thanks, Sandra, and congratulations, Evelyn and Paula. Um, our next award is uh, North Franklin District, and Greg Taylor will present it. Good afternoon. It's a pleasure to present Kathy McCacken as the North Franklin School District uh, Crystal Apple Award winner. If I could have her family and staff and friends please stand, if we can recognize them. Thank you. I've had a great experience working with Kathy. It's interesting, I was, I was her peer. I worked as a colleague of Kathy at Basin City Elementary, and then I was her principal, and now I'm her superintendent. So I've had an excellent experience in working with Kathy over the years. Um, just a couple of comments about Kathy. One of the hallmarks of the Crystal Apple teacher is an ability to elevate, motivate, and lead one's fellow teachers. Kathy McCacken is just that. She's a teacher who has excelled in her role as the North Franklin GLAD coach, which stands for Guided Language Acquisition Design. She has a masterful ability in tailoring her lessons to the individual needs of the students and shared this expertise with her fellow teachers. She teaches model lessons and supports teachers with the best practices in the classroom and effective lesson planning. She is extremely motivated and a positive influence on her colleagues as well as students. Further, Kathy has been influential in the district's professional learning communities, and she is also in the district's writing committee where she's played a vital role in helping the district implement power standards, benchmark tests, and a guaranteed and viable curriculum. And I also might mention that she's involved in the district's PE, social studies, math, reading, and bio, bilingual education committees. Kathy demonstrates a love of teaching no matter what the subject or assignment she is given. One of the comments from a fellow principal said, Kathy is a professional and always smiling as she moves from building to building, classroom to classroom throughout the district. Kathy has motivated her colleagues to be better in everything that she does through her professionalism and care. She's dedicated to her, professional, to her profession every second of the day. A phenomenal teacher, Kathy continually goes above and beyond for students in the North Franklin School District. In addition, Kathy has taken an additional role of a principal designee, which is no fun. <laughs> she can be seen daily with students providing interventions, teaching, and assisting throughout the building. Kathy McCacken has proven herself to be an outstanding peer leader and team builder who's highly respected by teachers, staff, and students and community members. Her leadership skills and talents are worthy of recognition, and that's why I'm so pleased to present the Kathy Crystal Apple Award to Kathy McCacken. Thank you, Greg. Congratulations, Kathy. To present the award for the uh, Kiona Benton School District, Superintendent Rom Costaheya. Well, good afternoon and welcome, and we appreciate you being here for all of the recipients, but for me especially, for Jolyn. And I want to uh, invite a couple of people to stand up. Uh, her parents are here. Would you stand, please? Her mother and father. Her husband, Josh, is here. Josh, and a very special young man, Keegan, are you there? You want to stand up or are you already standing? There he is. Well, I have the unique pleasure of being the superintendent at Kiona Benton School District. I, oh, and there's one other group I want to ask to stand. Uh, colleagues of JoLynn, if you're here, members of the Kiona Benton School District, would you stand? There they are. And it's my extreme pleasure to introduce Jolyn McCarty. Jolyn serves as a fitness and health teacher in our school district at the middle school. Jolyn's been with the district and she's taught a number of different things as well as health and fitness. She's also came to the district as a um, teacher in a six through 12 alternative school. And she's taught just about every subject area in that school, which when I first read that information, I thought, wow, how has she gotten to do all of those things so quickly because she's so young. The, um, JoLynn also serves as, the, uh, as a committee member on numerous committees in the building. She is a, uh, not just the, uh, using her expertise in health and fitness as a teacher, she strongly believes in teaching across numerous content areas, 
by integrating reading, writing, and math concepts into her daily, daily lessons as a fitness and health teacher. And always with a positive attitude and always an inspiring personality. She's well respected by her peers and students alike. At the middle school, Jolyn has directed our Navigation 101 curriculum as well as coordinating our K program, which is an advisory program. No small feat. She has re uh, reorganized the physical education curriculum to expose students to a wider variety of activities, allowing students all, of all abilities to more fully participate and enjoy the program. A fellow teacher says Jolyn is a team player who handles problems with diplomacy. Her work ethic is beyond reproach, and she does not quit until the job is completed. Very tenacious. Jolyn's versatility and enthusiasm are unsurpassable. She volunteers on a variety of committees, as I mentioned earlier, and constantly seeks out new professional um, development opportunities to sharpen her skills as an instructor. She is a true team player who always puts the needs of her students first. One student said, Mrs. McCarty is always thinking of new things to do in her classes. She creates games and activities that will be enjoyable for the majority, if not all of her students. This keeps students active in fun ways and she keeps learning fun. JoLynn encourages her students both on and off the court throughout their academic interests. She's a natural leader with strong ideas that her peers are eager to support. As principal Vance Wing stated, JoLynn is one that inspires those around her to be better, work harder, and assure that the students we teach are getting the best education they can. I, I couldn't have put it better myself, JoLynn. It's my pleasure today to congratulate you and welcome you as a recipient for 2012 of the Crystal Apple Award. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you, Ron. Congratulations, JoLynn. To present for the Kennewick School District is Superintendent Dave Bond. Well, good afternoon, and again, we want to take a second to thank all of the uh, folks who are a part of this and all the sponsors. Before I begin, though, I'd like to say uh, a word to my colleague, uh, uh, Dr. Cummins, uh, who is a graduate of Gonzaga and has an apparent conflict this afternoon, <laughs> that those of us who attended WSU do not have a similar conflict today, <laughs> <laughs> or ever. <laughs> um, I'm, again, proud and honored to have the opportunity to introduce the outstanding educators from the Kennewick School District. But before I introduce them, uh, again, I'd like to thank all the folks. We have lots of outstanding teachers, not only in Kennewick, but in all the districts that are represented here. And teaching, uh, which I did for over a decade of my career, needs a whole lot more kudos and just a little bit less blame for all of society's ails. And so that's why a program like this is so neat for all of us. It's just a breath of fresh air. We need to celebrate our teachers who day in and day out do a wonderful job and make an enormous contribution to our society. So I'd like to begin with our two teachers, first with Caprice, Ol uh, Caprice Consalvo Olson, who's a reading specialist at Cascade Elementary. Caprice, do you have, uh, I think you have folks here, don't we have uh, the staff at uh, Cascade? Would you go ahead and stand and be recognized? And And any other family members? Yes, <laughs> again. Five simple but very important and meaningful words describe Caprice and her contribution to the students, staff, parents, and community at Cascade. They are these five words. Teamwork, leadership, motivation, passion, and dedication. Let's take a look at each. Teamwork. Caprice is known not only for working together with her colleagues, but for also working with parents. One of Cascade's PTA members tells us that Caprice, for years, has consistently been involved with various PTA functions at the school. And this parent says, I cannot say enough wonderful things about Caprice or how much the PTA is blessed to have her on our team. Motivation. A Cascade parent had this to say about Caprice's ability to motivate students to succeed. When working with reading groups, she offers encouragement and praise. 
She knows each individual child's strengths and challenges and adapts to meet their needs. The children respond to her with respect. She shows them that through hard work and diligence, anything is possible. Leadership. Caprice is the undisputed teacher leader in her building. She has developed phenomenal relationships with all of the staff members, both certificated and classified, and works cooperatively with each and every one to plan for high levels of success with her students. She will truly do whatever is necessary to ensure that the entire staff has a clear vision for the future and a plan to attain their goals each school year. Passion. Caprice absolutely pours her heart and soul into her teaching every single day. As a reading specialist, she works with struggling readers and pushes them to believe in themselves. She manages to get the absolute best out of her students by establishing a trusting, loving rapport with each and every one of them. And finally, dedication. Caprice's principal, Chad Foltz, sums it up this way. In my 16 years of education, Caprice is without a doubt in the top 1% of the most dedicated people in the teaching profession I have ever worked with. She is the first one to school in the morning and the last one to leave at the end of the day. She will do everything in her power to ensure that children learn at the highest level possible and will absolutely never, ever quit on a child. Congratulations, Caprice, one of Kennewick's Crystal Apple Award winners. Did you want to say a word or two? I'd just like to say thank you to, um, it's such an honor to Chad and to Sylvia Loesfeld for um, nominating me and also the cabinet of Ken the Kennewick School District and the award selection committee. Um, I can't thank you enough. What an honor it is. Thank you for all your hard work. Thank you. So our next Crystal Apple Award winner is Jean Gardner, who teaches third grade at Hawthorne Elementary. Again, if we have family members from Jean, if you'd stand, and then, there we go. And uh, the staff at Hawthorne, if you'll kind of stand and be recognized, Jean's colleagues. <laughs> Thank you. The first thing that struck me when I was reading through the uh, nomination packets, particularly about Jean, was this thought. Wow, this teacher really likes math. So much so that she's taken on the task of leading her school's family math night committee for the last five years. Each time, Jean has sought and received the support of staff, parents, and volunteers from the community to create one of the most well-received parent involvement activities every year at Hawthorne. She also serves on the school's math improvement committee, and her principal says it is in due to no small part of Jean's leadership and dedication that Hawthorne has shown significant improvement in district and state math assessment scores. A master teacher, she has excellent command of current teaching strategies and demonstrates flexibility and innovation working with Hawthorne's diverse student population. She designs lessons that ensure the success of all children, yet provides opportunities to apply higher order thinking skills. Math and science journals, hands-on activities, Peer partnerships, innovative projects, and effective technology practice are all part of the day in Jean Gardner's classroom. A parent who has volunteered in Jean's classroom wrote a nomination letter for this award, and I'd like to read a bit of it to you because I think it really exemplifies why we are here honoring Jean today. Quote, I have witnessed firsthand how hard Mrs. Gardner works at motivating her students, creating an environment that is both enriching and fun. Our oldest daughter treasured receiving notes back from Mrs. Gardner when she placed a letter in the classroom mailbox. This ritual strengthened our daughter's writing skills while providing a fun classroom tradition. Two years later, our youngest daughter had Mrs. Gardner and was passionate about the living creatures that were kept in the classroom for the students to witness and learn about. Both of our children, this person writes, gained their interest in science while in Mrs. Gardner's classroom. Her enthusiasm for the subject was transcendent. She was not only a wonderful role model and mentor to our two children, but also 
a role model for the many children who have had the amazing opportunity to learn from her. And with that, Jean, we congratulate you on receiving this Crystal Apple Award. Thank you for this honor, and I accept this knowing I represent the staff of Hawthorne Elementary. From Mr. Miller, our principal, to the teachers, to the counselor, to the secretary, and to all our educational assistants, we are all dedicated to helping each student achieve personal growth. I'm particularly delighted to be recognized for promoting the best subject in the day, mathematics. <laughs> As Jim McLean, a retired teacher from Kamaiken, used to say, math is a language of patterns. Math makes sense. Math is useful. Math is fun. Math is a thing of beauty. Thank you. Congratulations, Gina Caprice. Thank you, Dave. Uh, the awardee for the Finley School District will be uh, recognized by Superintendent Lance Hahn. You forgot scary on that math. Good evening, and thank you for joining us tonight uh, at the award ceremony. My name is Lance Hahn. I'm pleased to present for the first time Crystal Apple Awards as superintendent of Finley School District. Uh, today I'm honored to introduce to you a fantastic Finley teacher, Miss Jennifer Ward. I would like to thank Jennifer's family. If they would please stand up. and also the Finley staff and community members for joining us tonight. And students, awesome. Jennifer is in her 12th year at Finley and her roles and responsibilities at Riverview High School are the epitome of multitasking. Not only does Jennifer teach health, food and fitness, and fashion classes in her day-to-day -day routine, she also advises FCCLA, has initiated CPR classes, runs blood drives, and volunteered at countless school activities and fundraisers. Her energy seems boundless. A teacher who, of her own initiative, began a Y Fitness time during lunch to get students up and moving. She is a student advocate through and through, and one of those teachers whom alumni are always stopping by to check in on. She's also what we refer in the business as a kid magnet. Principal Brian Long at Riverview said of Jennifer, her energy and excitement in the classroom and at the school excites numerous students to be better themselves. I know I can count on Ms. Ward to not only accomplish the job in the classroom, but also be the first to step forward and support student in building needs. Ms. Ward is one of the greatly admired nationally board certified teachers in Finley. And how she found the time to do this with all the other stuff she, she does is incredible. Um, I had the opportunity as the principal last year at the high school to work with her directly. And uh, I, I don't know how she does it. Uh, I, okay, sorry about that. Yet it's flexible when a student needs an extra push or words of encouragement. The programs she oversees continue to grow and flourish each year thanks to her positive attitude and energy. A school board member said Jennifer is continually searching for new issues of interest and needs to fill the voids in our students' learning environments. Students privileged enough to have taken a class from Ms. Ward are more than likely to sign up for another at their first opportunity. While most teachers covet their sacred prep time, Jennifer's classroom is an open door and constantly welcoming environment to her students, even during her prep hour. 
She teaches students so much more than what can be found in a syllabus, offering lessons in life and support. Winston Churchill once said, we make a living by what we get. We make a life by what we give. Be prepared for a great life. Jennifer, you are a true educator and a credit to our profession for all the right reasons. It is a true honor to present this award to you. And finally, I'd like to introduce uh, Dr. Lou Gates from the Burbank School District. Unlike my colleagues, I brought a whole notebook full. No, I'm joking. Um, and I'd like to say a segue in, uh, thank you, Jennifer. She happens to live right down the road from where I live, and we ride our bikes past her house frequently, and she's out jogging or whatever. Today, I am pleased to introduce you to the Columbia School District 2012 Crystal Apple recipient uh, for our very own school. And one thing I'd like to do before we... Um, before I read this, I'd like to say, her, will her family please stand that are here? Remain standing. And also, students and staff who have come, will you also stand? Thank you. Um, organized, efficient, Energetic, with a willingness to help both students and colleagues, Heidi has been teaching resource and life skills to students in grades 5 through uh, 12 at Columbia Middle School and our high school. And she was hired by one of our own, Bruce Hawkins. Would you please stand? He saw the wisdom in hiring her several years ago. Thank you. Bruce is also one of our community members. Thank you very much. High school principal Kyle Miller says, Heidi is, a special is the special education department at Columbia High School. She took over a struggling program just over a decade ago and has built up a strong, well-respected department, providing her students with quality education, sound expectations, and mountains of support. Through economy of the times, she has consolidated her department drastically. She is positively optimistic about students, working with those from the wild, widest possible spectrum of abilities, needs, and accommodations. She teaches individual students as the most, each one as the most outstanding student in the school. Heidi developed and implemented work programs for students with several Tri-Cities uh, and Tri-City businesses and continues to monitor and mentor her students in their work. Heidi has developed and monitored extended learning programs for homebound students and in her spare time she works closely with Special Olympics and any other organization that can help benefit your students. Heidi instills confidence in parents and is an able and effective communicator with them to provide the best education possible for all of her students. Heidi is also a valued resource to her fellow teachers, providing consultation and recommendation for accommodations that allow her students to fully participate in mainstream classrooms. She works closely with special education teams and also uh, others to develop IEPs or individual e education plans that cover everything needed to give each student the best education possible. Fellow teacher um, Holly Espinoza, who nominated Heidi for this award says, Heidi contributed to our Columbia School District family in an awesome manner. 
She has made uh, the mistake of becoming irreplaceable, and we thank you for that. She is an amazing teacher, educator, and a student favorite. Heidi is indeed an excellent teacher and mentor to both her students and peers, according to Ellie and Souza. Ellie, are you here tonight? Um, oh, she's in Alaska. <laughs> Ellie worked with Heidi for a number of years as a peer educator. Ellie wrote, Heidi has a passion for her students and the subjects she teaches. She is skilled, conscientious, dedicated, committed, as a teacher who understands how to collaborate and be a team player. She is creative, is an excellent role model, and accepts criticisms, both positive and negative. Speaking of criticism, Heidi actively seeks me out when she has a question about how things run in the district. And she knows that I have learned to do the same. I appreciate this, Heidi. A few weeks ago, I dropped into her classroom, only to find that she was out with other students. Later, she sought me out and said, you dropped by my classroom. Did I do something wrong? <laughs> well, I said, the wrong that you did was supporting and advocating for a student. Heidi, you did an awesome job. Oh, thank you. Heidi sheepishly gushed. I thought I did something wrong. <laughs> Heidi, what you do is something right. Something very special for our students. Congratulations and thank you for being a special teacher, a colleague, and a friend to students, staff, and parents of Columbia School District. Thanks, Lou. Congratulations, Heidi. I'd like to introduce now uh, Jerry Holloway uh, from River, Washington River Protection Solutions. Good afternoon. Can everyone hear me okay? Yes? Okay, <laughs> thank you. Um, this really has been a good afternoon just listening to the presentations and, and hearing about what's going on in the classrooms in our community. And I'm gonna make a quick editorial comment. Uh, our society is so blessed that we often take for granted the blessings that we have and the many good things that are in our lives. And this event is really a appreciation on the part of many in our communities. You look at the sponsors, but others as well, who don't take what you do every day every weekend, every evening, for granted. And it's a way of saying thank you, and I want to personally do that on behalf of the sponsors. Thank you for all that you do for our community. So with that, it's now my honor and my privilege to introduce, the, uh, introduce you and join you with, with you in recognizing our Special Achievement Award winner for this year. And let me get my comments out here. Uh, this is a person who's worked for decades. I won't say how many just yet, but uh, decades in serving our community's youth. In keeping with tradition, I'll delay naming the uh, individual to a little bit later on. Today's honoree was an athlete in their younger days and I'm told still regularly interjects uh, sports analogies or some might call them boring cliches into their conversations. So in that spirit, I'm going to kick off their introduction. A longtime Tricidian, this person began their career in education in the classroom, teaching elementary and middle school students. It's unknown whether they had a reputation for exceptional fairness or going by the book when it came to classroom discipline because they had pursued a law degree before going into education. In 1988, after 13 years in the classroom, our honoree made a career change of sorts. They left the classroom and moved to the laboratory, 
Pacific Northwest Laboratory. At that time, now we know it as Pacific Northwest National Laboratory. There, this person's focus remained the same. Helping young people gain skills and experiences could equip them for an enriched and successful life. The methods just changed. Now, Jeff Estes was helping students by linking academic learning to the world beyond the classroom, with a special emphasis on the teaching and learning of science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, or what we call the STEM curriculum. He joined PNNL as a science education specialist. Ten years later, in 1998, he became manager of science and engineering education at the laboratory. During his tenure in that position, Jeff's team has engaged tens of thousands of students and teachers in improving our education, our children's education, and career opportunities. Currently, PNNL's Office of Science and Engineering Education offers seven lab-based workforce development and diversity programs for students, two lab-based professional development programs for teachers and faculty, leads two statewide science education reform projects, and participates in more than a dozen outreach efforts targeting students, teachers, education leaders, parents, and community leaders. And I would imagine that in this room there are many of you who have worked in one fashion or another with those programs. These efforts have been recognized by numerous groups, including the Washington Science Teachers Association, the Washington State and Yakima Valley Tri-Cities Mesa programs, Southeast Washington Association of School Administrators, and the Mid-Columbia Education Alliance. Jeff holds bachelor's in si social sciences and master of education degrees from Western Washington University. And I worked with Jeff uh, some years ago and could speak personally to his commitment to students, to teachers, and to his coworkers. And today, on behalf of the Crystal Apple Steering Committee, it's my pleasure to introduce Jeff as this year's Special Achievement Award winner. Jeff, come on up. to introduce Peggy, his wife, who's back here as well. If you would stand, please. I said, do I have to say? I thought I was coming to uh, accept an award on behalf of Battelle. Um, nobody, and, uh, and I am, because I'm very fortunate to work for Battelle uh, in the Pacific Northwest National Laboratory and its commitment to education. And I was pleased that Peggy was introduced because uh, She's an elementary teacher in the Richland School District for 34 years. And uh, a lot of what I learned about education, I actually learned from my wife. This may surprise some people, others it may not. Um, enjoyed working there. I, I'm pleased we are here, or I'm here to be a part of this because uh, we have this concept at Mattel about working on important things that involve teams in the science area and community service and so on. And when we put teams together, we think about the scientific expertise we have. I think about the science education staff I have. And I see Ann Wright Mockler back there. And you should stand up as well so people can see who you are. Because you're only as good as the people that surround you. Right? And, and most importantly, then working with the education community. This whole notion of STEM learning and STEM learning teams. And we're always mindful, always mindful that those that touch kids daily are the ones that matter. So I'm really pleased to be recognized with all of you. Thank you. Well, thank you all for being here, and thank you for allowing me to to be the host again this year. Just this is one of the great great days in the Tri Cities. Um, just to echo a couple of the comments, I mean, uh, teachers keep, keep uh, the whole project of civilization going forward. And uh, it's nice to take a day out to recognize some of our finest, especially in a time when um, eh, it seems like the last year or so, educators have been criticized a lot. And uh, uh, what you do is uh, so impactful and so special. So thank you. Please stay and have some refreshments. Um, stick around and get